This week on the Story of Coffee, we're going to be talking about the processing methods used in coffee. There are three main processing methods that we want to talk about. The first is going to be a wash coffee, which is going to give you a very clean cup. You're going to taste all the different organic compounds grown within the soil in the coffee bean. The next is a natural or dry processed coffee, which is going to give you a very complex and intense fruit flavors. And lastly is the honey process where the mucilage is left on the outside of the coffee bean, which is going to import a very sweet tasting coffee. So let's dive into each one of those deeper. The first is going to be the wash process coffee. So when the coffee cherry is picked, there's going to be a lot of water used to remove that uh, cherry and mucilage from the bean and then it's going to be left out to dry. And so that is going to be the best way to taste what is inside of the coffee bean itself, the different growing regions, the different elevations, um, all the different organic soils and compounds found within it. Um, you're really going to be able to taste it in a wash coffee. It's going to have very clean notes. It's going to be more easily identifiable and it's the most common type of processing methods used in coffee. So you're going to see a lot of washed coffees. That's because in single origins, you really want to be able to pull out those different tasting notes and experience what makes each coffee's region and the farmer's hard work so special. Now, the next one is a natural or dry process. One of my favorites, uh, that's where the coffee cherry, once it's picked, it's going to be left on the outside of the coffee bean for a period of time. What that's going to do is allow a fermentation process to happen with the coffee cherry and mucilage around the coffee bean itself. It's going to import a lot of uh, high fruit notes. It's going to add a lot of complexity to the coffee and you're going to get that really intense flavors, which is what you guys got with our Ethiopia tier one last week was a natural processed coffee. And so it was a fruit bomb and that's because of the processing method that is used. So next is going to be the honey process. That's the coffee that you guys got this week, which is a Zambia honey process. It's a killer coffee. Um, it's incredibly sweet and uh, has a lot of really good body and chocolate notes. And it's also have some of that ripe berry on the front end of the tasting of the cup. So a honey processed coffee, uh, before we kind of get into it, you've got to understand that there's three parts to a coffee bean. There's the cherry, which is the actual fruit that's grown on the outside of it. There's the mucilage, which is um, a sugary organic compound that protects the bean itself from the cherry and what's outside of it, it's really sticky. And then the coffee bean itself, which is the green bean that we get when it's imported to us. So a honey processed coffee is where they remove the cherry from the outside, but the mucilage is left on the outside of the coffee bean and it's then allowed to dry. Now the different drying times um, with the, how long that mucilage is left on is going to change the color of that mucilage. So you're going to get yellows, reds, black, white, um, as kind of that process changes. And so the longer that it's left on, the sweeter and more intense um, of a cup you're going to get. And so a honey processed coffee is kind of in between your natural and washed where your wash is gonna be really clean and easy to identify, a natural is gonna be really complex and fruity, and your honey is gonna be uh, exactly that. It's gonna taste like honey and have a lot of sweetness to it because of that sugary mucilage that's left on the outside of it that imparts some of those fruit flavors, some of that sweetness into the coffee and makes for a really awesome, complex, tasty coffee. So those are the three main processing methods that you're gonna see within coffee. And there's also some experimental processes and methods coming out like anaerobic and carbonic. Um, and anaerobic is where they put the coffee cherries into a large water tank and remove all the oxygen out of that and allow some fermentation to happen. Um, and so we're gonna try to bring some of those different processing and experimental methods to you guys so you can experience um, kind of the cutting edge of what growers are doing to kind of push the envelope within coffee. And uh, we're really excited about the coffee that you guys have this week. Thanks so much for being a part of our story and have a great week.